All right, so we have another episode for you guys. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how I got back into the Apple ecosystem. With all the different products that are out there now and just technology being even more advanced than we imagined and just pretty much play a significant role in our everyday lives now. To me, it's important to evaluate which products out there are useful for you and very beneficial to your lifestyle. Now. For me, that is going to involve some different features that I will require and for the various use that I need for all the different types of tech that I use. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and jump into today's topic because I think it's a really good one, not only for me to just share, but for me to just reflect on how I got back into the Apple ecosystem. So as you can see, I have different things set up here and they are pretty much well used items in my everyday day tech that I typically use or just use very, very often. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first main thing that I want to talk about and just kind of like go over the general usage and how I form the idea that I'm really invested into Apple's ecosystem and how Apple's products can just work so well together as most of us probably already know. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about is my iPhone. Now, of course, these three items here, my Mac my iPhone and my AirPods Pro are no surprise to really talk about as there are probably the most popular items that Apple has in their line of products that they produce. To me, these are probably the most popular ones that people are generally going to gravitate to. So the main category these items fit into are my everyday use items or my everyday tech. I'm generally going to pick up these three items to use. And of course, with my phone being included, it is, I would say, a tie between my iPhone and my MacBook Pro that I use the absolute most out of the Apple products that I have. And also, I'm going to talk about a few reasons later in the video as to why I decided to full-on invest into the Apple ecosystem. So first, talking about my iPhone here, pretty much gonna cover the main details, how it fits into my lifestyle. So the iPhone is just, you know, just really a great looking product. For me, aesthetics is important and I like to be able to look at the product and just see the beauty in it. And it really helps me pick up that product even more and use it very often. Now to some people that might not matter as much. Some people focus more on the functionality of the tech that they are using and that is just as important. I definitely agree there but for aesthetics again for me I have to be able to look at it and enjoy and appreciate how it looks. So the iPhone definitely fits that category there. So I pretty much can guarantee I'm going to take care of it like a baby and just yeah. So that is me. I'm not rough with anything that I own. Now when it comes to some things that I might want to test out the durability of I might generally you know put it through some tests of that but overall I'm gonna be taking care of my things and try to you know keep it in a very very nice pristine condition pretty much like I got it day one so again the iPhone just works very well of course usually I feel like the iPhone is probably the first thing that people get into that's probably sparks that you know as being team Apple per se I personally think the iPhone is a step in how you could get into the ecosystem we know that Apple puts a lot of energy into the OS and with that being said it does it have everything no it doesn't now of course there's just some things that Apple just haven't implemented yet that has been out in the tech world for years keeping things refined I think Apple is pretty good at that so again my iPhone is going to be one of my top used Apple products and it was pretty much this new iOS I would say 15 and now transitioning into 16 has has even amped up my user experience for the iOS software. This was definitely the first start in me investing and in seeing how far I would go into the ecosystem. Interesting enough, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about my AirPods Pros. These are the first generation, and if you are an earbuds person, then the AirPods are probably your pair of earbuds of choice and you use most often. And I am definitely one of those people where I will pick up my AirPods Pro probably before 
before I pick up another set of earbuds just because they pair so well and they work so well with the OS. And then if I need to switch my AirPods Pro to my MacBook, it's super easy. My AirPods Pro is gonna switch like that. And I love that because I personally enjoy saving time. And that is another important big deal for me. Now I didn't touch on charging. When it comes to the downside of using some of Apple's products is just the different charging ports. I'm not sure why Apple still has lightning on their AirPods and their iPhones and also on their computer accessories. It's kind of annoying because my MacBook charges USB-C or Mac say if I'm not charging my iPhone, I will literally have to pull out the lightning cable just to charge this if I need to and vice versa. And I am ready for a universal charging station or just set up. And personally, I think it's just way more convenient and it would work very well in how I travel and I can carry less cables. I'm looking forward to a USB-C connection for all around Apple products. And of course, with my other tech that I use that charges or utilize the USB-C connection. So now I'm talking about my MacBook Pro. This is my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro and it is configured for extensive heavy CPU and GPU usage and I have enjoyed this investment so far. So currently if I have my MacBook for six months now and I have used it every single day. I also include this in my everyday tech video. I would say it's probably my most used tech that I use every single day like without a doubt. I wake up to it you know either planning a video or a project that I'm currently working on is waiting for me to continue to work on it. With that being said, that just shows you how much I enjoy this beast of a machine. And I mean, it works so well with my flow, you know, being able to airdrop any videos that I have on my iPhone and instantly being able to work on it for editing, just either documents, photos, so on and so forth. It's so easy to transfer items, you know, between one another. For me, again, I need something very convenient, quick, and reliable, and I just simply did not want to risk corrupting those files. It's important for me that everything works and flows very well together. So previously, I was exclusively filming with my iPhones, and that involved using my iPhone XR as well as my 13 Pro Max, and it was just really easy to film with a super light setup using my iPhones. It was great. I mean, the videos will come out very good. You know, they look really clean and I enjoyed again how well I was able to film and then immediately airdrop those videos over to my MacBook. So I touched on this particular accessory for my MacBook. It is my most used accessory and the reason why I decided to pick up the external trackpad is because I wanted to keep my MacBook set up clean. So with the external trackpad I feel like it provides some flexibility for me and it just connects via Bluetooth to my MacBook and it just works so well and it's so super quick in connection. I just love the chips that Apple is using and making their products work so well together. So getting back to iPhone accessories, here are just a few. I have some cases here that I use a lot during this year and when I purchased my iPhone 13 Pro Max, actually some really great cases to use, mainly because they are featured with that Max Save, being that they are Apple cases. So it makes using other Apple products paired with the main device. I can't stress enough how well they work together. So everything that's Stamp Apple generally going to work very well together and the MadSafe wallet and the cases are no exception to that. It's minimalistic, it's easy, and you can just have everything you need in a super minimalistic setup. I have to give it to Apple on that. They definitely have the dub on that for sure. All right, so next I'm going to talk about is the actual MadSafe charger here. Now I know it's in its box, but that's because I've been using a really good third party version of the Mass A charger and Apple's version just haven't had the chance to come out the box, but hopefully soon. So this is the third party one I've used and it's been working really, really good. And the main selling point to me for this Mass A charger is the kit stand. Now I did a short video on this Mass A charger. This kit stand is really cool and I just like how they really did this. So I personally like this one and have been using it exclusively for Mass A charger 
margin and it travels with me as well. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna cover my everyday Apple products that I use. Again, the initial spark is the iPhone 13 Pro Max for me. And it actually got me really excited to upgrade to the upcoming iPhone 15. I know it's still early on talking about that one, but as you know, there's already leads, speculations and rumors that people are talking about with the iPhone 15. And I'm personally excited for the new charging capability with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So I'm looking forward to that. And that's probably gonna be one of the top reasons why I will upgrade. So now I wanna quickly talk about how I've enjoyed being in the Apple's ecosystem. Most of the reasons I've already touched on, and I pretty much can just tell you that it's just very easy to use and super convenient. And I feel like Apple is keeping a very premium experience as well as a intuitive experience. So if you're considering just kind of like, you know, jumping all in or at least using two devices that could pair really well with your everyday usage, then I can tell you I'm not disappointed in that I got these many Apple products that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm actually looking to switch out my desktop setup um, and being a all around Mac user. So again, by me using the 13 inch MacBook Air M1 version and now the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, the Mac experience has been excellent. They refined their OS for the Mac system and it's looking really good. And on top, as we already know, the silicon chips that they're producing is really good. I mean, ever since the M1 hit the market, pretty much been in love ever since. And that goes as far as the aesthetics and just the creativity that Apple has built up surrounding the silicon chip from the M1. I think over time, they're just gonna keep making those improvements, of course, as well as little refinements. Cause you know, nothing is quite perfect, but it is pretty close. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video as I just wanted to highlight some key points and some key factors as how I was able to get into the Apple's ecosystem and why I have been very happy with the system and just all the different products that I I use from Apple and why I plan on keeping this as a long-term system that I'm just into. So um, that really says a lot. And for me to decide to make plans to, you know, change out my desktop, because if you don't know, I have mentioned this in another video or my other videos that I talked about using my MacBook Air. I have been a long time Windows user and I just was one of the biggest advocates for Windows and just PC. That really says a lot. If you want a deeper dive and some, you know, more in-depth reasons as to why I decided to fully invest into the system, then let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can get that video done for you guys, you know, if you, you know, are really curious. But yeah, these are just some key components to look at. Even if you watch this video, I will say continue to do your research and evaluate what features you're looking for to getting out of Apple's ecosystem. So that way you can have extensive information information to review because to be honest with you, <laughs> this is not the most affordable system to get into. I am looking to cover a little more details into, you know, some different things here. I got some long-term reviews that I have planned. So hopefully you guys stay tuned for those, but you guys already know the drill. Hopefully you consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. You guys also let me know if you're using a few Apple products and how that works for you. Overall, the main things that are important to me are how intuitive the ecosystem is, functionality, convenience, slash performance, and aesthetics. So those are just a few of my top reasons what those products will have to do for me to invest into it. And those things may vary for you. So if you know someone that's interested in getting a quick highlight of what they can generally expect, then hopefully you share the video with them as well. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Peace.